January is approaching very quickly, and as we get closer and closer to January, that means we're also getting closer and closer to CES, which also means we're getting more and more GPU leaks and rumors and things of that nature. And so today we do have some new information regarding the RTX 5070 Ti and the RTX 5070. We also have a little bit more information regarding the upcoming Intel Battle Mage GPUs, as well as the 5090, 5090D, and even some X3D CPU information. So stay tuned for all of that. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Sponsored by Exter. Introducing Exter's brand new Card Holder Pro. Made 100% from recycled aluminum with built-in RFID protection and a lifetime warranty. This is truly the future of wallets. It can hold up to 14 cards in total with up to seven of those cards in the card holder. The metal ejector trigger allows for fast and easy access to all of your cards. Exter also has an add-on ecosystem. Introducing Exter's all new Finder card, which works directly with Apple's built-in Find My app on your iPhone. And now you will never have to worry about losing your wallet ever again, because if you do, you simply open up the Find My application on your iPhone and you can track your wallet down. And finally, Exter also offers you a key case, which will go perfectly with your card holder probe. It offers one-handed access to all of your keys. It can hold up to eight keys at a time. Exter is currently running their Black Friday sale. They are offering 50% off, but with my code EROCK on tech, you will get another 5% off, making that 55% off. The link will be down below in the video description. Thank you, Exter, for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let's start off with the RTX 5000 series GPUs. It is expected that NVIDIA will launch the RTX 5000 series GPUs at CES 2025, coming up in January. And right now, the majority of the 50 series cards are expected to launch sometime in the first quarter of 2025. The 5060 Ti and 5060 are expected to launch sometime in April. Now, I will say, I forgot to mention this before, but it should go without saying, and it should be common sense, but take all of this with a grain of salt until Nvidia makes an official statement saying, this is what you're getting and this is when you're getting it. Everything is subject to change and everything is in the category of a leak or rumor and should be treated as such. Now, all of my sources will be down below in the video description, but pretty much everything is coming directly from videocards.com. So videocards.com along with Benchlife have both reported similar information claiming the RTX 5070 Ti will feature the GP203-300 GPU and it will have 8,960 CUDA cores. It will also be rated for 300 watts TGP and it's looking like it will have 16 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory. The RTX 5070 on the other hand is expected to feature the GB205 GPU and it's said to have 6,400 CUDA cores rated at 250 watts TDP. This model is said to feature 12 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory. Now, when it comes to talking about GPUs, there's really two things that most gamers care about, and that is the pricing and the performance of the GPU. And unfortunately, right now, it's way too early to talk about those things because we don't actually know the official price of the upcoming 5070, and we don't know the official performance of the upcoming 5070 either. However, if we assume for a moment that the 5070 will cost the exact same price as the 4070 at launch in terms of US MSRP, then we can compare specifications of the cards and make a little bit of an estimate there. And now looking at the VRAM, we can see that the 5070 will have 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the 4070 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM. We can see that the bus width is said to be 192 bit on the 5070, just like the 4070. However, the main difference is the fact that the 4070 is using GDDR6X memory, whereas the 5070 will be using GDDR7 memory, so it will be better memory. And now if we switch over and look at the total CUDA core count, we can see that the 5070 does have a nice little bump there in terms of overall CUDA cores available. And so ideally the 5070 should be faster than the 4070 in terms of raw rasterization. However, that remains to be seen. We do have to wait to get our hands on the card and actually test it. And my speculation is that Nvidia will probably lean very heavy on DLSS 4 and frame generation 2.0 or something like that to really market all of these upcoming 50 series cards. Now, if we switch over and look at the 5070 Ti, when we compare that to the 4070 Ti, we do get an improvement in the overall bus width going from 192 bit up to 256 bit. We also get four more gigabytes of VRAM and there is another nice little jump there in terms of overall CUDA core count. And so the 5070 Ti does look to be a much better improvement over the base. 4070 Ti. However, where things start to get a little bit hairy is if we start to compare the 4070 Ti Super. The 4070 Ti Super also has a 
256 bit on the bus width. It also has 16 gigabytes of VRAM and the total CUDA core count is 8,448. Whereas the rumored CUDA core count for the 5070 Ti is 8,960. Now, yes, the rumored specifications of the 5070 Ti still show the 5070 Ti having more CUDA cores than the 4070 Ti Super. However, the total amount of VRAM matches, the bus width matches, and now the only difference there in terms of VRAM will come down to GDDR6X versus GDDR7. And so outside of that, everything else is kind of lining up there. Again, it all comes down to third-party benchmarks and what the actual performance translates to on day one, as well as the overall price point. And so all of that remains to be seen. And I'm actually looking forward to getting my hands on these cards and testing them for myself to make a final conclusion there. And by the way, speaking of all the VRAM, it is looking like that Nvidia will exclusively be using Samsung's version of GDDR7 memory for all of their desktop RTX 50 series GPUs. According to this article, Nvidia is still considering SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron for their mobile GPUs. But as far as the desktop goes, it does seem like Samsung is the official vendor for the 50 series cards. Now, maybe you're not interested in an Nvidia GPU. GPU. And if that's the case, well, Thanksgiving is coming up and so is Black Friday. And right now, Amazon is running Black Friday sales. And right now, the AMD Radeon 7900 XT is on sale on Amazon for $649. Now, honestly, that's a really good deal on that GPU. I did a full review on that GPU here on the channel. And so if you want to check that out, I'll have that pop up right now for you. So you can click that link and go watch that full dedicated review. But overall, the 7900 XT is a really good card. And at that price point, it's really hard to beat. I mean, you are getting 20 gigabytes of VRAM with it. And so, yeah, I definitely recommend checking it out if you don't have your heart set on an NVIDIA GPU. Next up, do you remember the 4090D? Well, NVIDIA is doing it again with the 5090. They're making a 5090D and possibly even a 5080D as well. Basically, there is a US export restriction on high performance graphics processors out to China. And so NVIDIA has tried to bypass that by making the 4090D, which basically was a cut down version of the 4090. According to this article, in theory, the 4090D was not supposed to be able to reach the performance levels of a regular 4090. However, apparently Nvidia made no effort to actually enforce that. And so people were able to actually overclock the 4090D to match a normal 4090. And now there is a leaker, mega size GPU, who has leaked the logo type for the 5090D. And this is what it looks like. The article goes on to talk about why it is still called the 5090D instead of something else because the D for the 4090D was for the year of the dragon but the year of the dragon does not end until January the 28th so they are speculating that the 5090D will launch sometime before January 28th 2025. Now in all honesty I almost didn't talk about this because realistically I don't have a lot of people in China watching me. Most of my audience is in North America where I'm located and then I got some in Canada and then Australia and Europe. Anyway I know some people do find this information very insightful and interesting and so if that's you let me know in the comment section down below and in other gpu news and also talking about the 5090 if you want to pre-order a 5090 technically you can now pre-order up to eight 5090s if you want to with a company by the name of camino or comino somebody correct me in a comment section below if i'm saying that wrong basically they provide workstations and servers and so this is not meant for normal pc gamers the article goes on to talk about how this is not a normal pre-order rather it is a contact form allowing interested customers to express their interest all right look i'm going to call a spade a spade here i think this is really a glorified marketing tactic because if you can be one of the first companies technically accepting pre-orders for a 5090 it's going to get a lot of eyes on your company and look i don't doubt by any means at all if somebody actually contacted this company and said hey i want to pre-order eight 5090s they would find a way to take your money and get you on a reservation list, but I don't think you would be getting the 5090s any sooner than probably the rest of the world. I could be wrong, but anyway, I think it's just a really good marketing tactic. But you know what? It doesn't matter what I think. You let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Next up, Amazon has leaked Intel's next generation GPU, the ASRock Arc B580. And as you can see, this is the still legend model. It has a three fan design. It is coming in white and it definitely looks absolutely spectacular. We don't really have a lot of information on it, but apparently it will support 8K resolution and it will have a dual 8-pin power connector. Additionally, 
Amazon spoiled another ASRock Intel GPU model, the Challenger, and the Challenger is cut down a little bit more with only one eight pin connector, and it will have a standard dual fan design, and it will be the black model with a little bit of RGB on it. Okay, first of all, let me talk about the elephant in the room here. Yeah, it supports 8K, but you're not gonna be playing the latest and greatest AAA titles at, at 8K, 60 plus FPS. It's just not gonna happen, so don't fall for that. Don't think that's what it means because that's not what it actually means. Remember when NVIDIA tried to fool everybody with a 3090 doing 8K? This isn't any different than that. Now, there are a few things we did learn from this. Number one, we learned that ASRock will be an official board partner for Intel for this new generation. We also learned that there will be two models now, the Challenger and the Steel Legend coming in black and white with a dual and triple fan design. And we also learned that the Challenger will only have one eight pin design while the Steel Legend has a dual eight pin design but no fancy new connectors or anything like that so that's pretty cool and also with Black Friday right around the corner and it coming from Amazon some people are speculating that Intel might be making the announcement this week I don't think that's gonna happen I could be wrong but Either way, I don't think these cards are that far away because if Amazon already has images and certain pieces of information to put on their website, even if it is by a mistake, then I don't think these cards are that far away. And finally, let's talk about some AMD Ryzen CPUs. So the remainder of the AMD Ryzen 9000 X3D CPUs are launching by the end of January. That is the 9900 X3D and the 9950 X3D. And the main information to take away from this is that these CPUs will use the second generation of 3D V cache, which reverses the order of the CCD and cache compared to last generation. However, unfortunately, these CPUs will not have 3D V cache on each chiplet. Instead, AMD will implement the same design as the previous generation, which means an extra 64 megabytes only for a single die. And finally, something pretty cool that I never thought I would see. AMD has offered an exclusive Ryzen 7 9800X 3D launch kit in China with X3D keychains and hoodies. The 9800X3D came in a special box reminiscent of the Radeon series rather than the Ryzen. Inside the box was the retail 9800X3D package bundled with the keychain label 9800X3D as well as a hoodie that says AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D the legend is unbeatable on the back. Inside the hoodie there is a hidden message about second generation 3D V cache, a cheat sheet for those who need to share the information quickly. And that's it for today's video. I wanted to talk about the latest GPU news out there and give some thoughts and opinions on it. And really, I want to hear back from some of you. What do you think about all of this new information? Are you excited for the upcoming 5000 series GPUs? If not, are you excited for the Intel GPUs? Or are you going to take advantage of one of the AMD Radeon deals going on? And are you excited for the upcoming X3D processors? I really wish I could get my hands on the exclusive kit over in China, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like there are many ways to do that currently. So if somebody's watching this and if you have one and if you want to send it over, that would be awesome. So just let me know. Hey, a quick shout out to all of my Patreon members. I really appreciate all of you. And if you haven't joined the Patreon yet, consider joining. You can join for as little as $1 and that gives you Discord access and we would love to have you. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please do me a favor. Hit that like button because it goes a long way in helping me out. If you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.